now we got to come up with a concept. So we've got this LX570. What in the heck is it going to look like? I reached out to my good friend Shai Harari from H1 Media and I said, can you give me some kind of rendering of, you know, what you think might look kind of cool? And, uh, you know, he's done a lot of stuff over the years for different uh, motorsports uh, guys. So here's what he came up with. And I'm like, that looks pretty good. You know, you got the, the Cancer Treatment Center of America logo. Um, it doesn't look anything like a uh, Border Patrol vehicle. Oh, wait, it looks exactly like one, but it's okay. It didn't seem to be a problem, but yeah, I think it came out pretty good. Um, so now we got to put this thing together, right? All comes down to building this LX570, and let me tell you, it was not easy. The reason it wasn't easy is because no one's ever done it before. So they hand me this nice red, pretty pretty new. I think it only had like 2,500 miles on it. It was really low miles, and started tearing this thing down. I mean, I gutted this thing all the way down the firewall inside. There was nothing left. I mean, pulled every panel. I mean, we were just, it was crazy. Had to pull all the, the the suspension apart, and you know, in the production class, stock full, you got to leave most of it stock. So, you know, you have some modifications that you can do, but in, for the most part, it's a pretty you know factory deal, except you know, wheels, tires, and shocks. Still got to use your same you know upper and lower arms and steering boxes and motor and all that stuff. But um, yeah, it uh, it definitely was not easy. Uh, by any means, especially on the electrical. That was probably the hardest part of putting this uh, LX570 together. So as you can see, you know, <laughs> it was a lot of work to put this uh, this LX570 together. Uh, there was no shocks, you know. I mean, all this stuff was custom made. King had to make all custom parts for the vehicle. Some of the stuff was, uh, was good because we could use like the Tundra uh, you know, the, the wheel was right off the, uh, of the Tundra, that Rock Warrior wheel. Uh, I was running 35-inch BFG projects, uh, threw Sparco seats in it. As you can see, the roll cage uh, was, was put together. But overall, uh, an unknown for sure. Nobody that we knew, uh, I mean, really, no one has ever put a 200 series together. Lexus to race in Ba uh, at a professional level th that we knew of. And the complexity of the electrical systems and all of that was just it was it was really hard uh, I didn't realize how difficult it was and the favors that I needed to uh, to ask a lot of my uh, corporate friends um, even in Japan to just help me in, in different ways to make sure we can get this vehicle to work the way we needed to down in Mexico so this is a really cool picture uh, this is uh, my buddy Mark uh, building the front bumper of the LX570. We cut holes in the grill, uh, you know, we added lights and, you know, everything still had to be pretty stock. So we were very careful uh, to stay within the rules, but there was so much to do. And, uh, you know, I think it was six months, but it was a long time to build this thing and get it race ready for the Baja 500 in June of 2009. So yeah, just crazy. Crazy times, and uh, you know, it just came out amazing. So finally, the truck's done. Got to make it look pretty. Is it really going to look like the concept uh, picture that we put together? I was surprised. It looked almost exactly like the concept picture that we had. And you can see these guys just, you know, muscling them through the wrap, uh, putting the wrap on, and. Uh, we were, I think we were in a time crunch for sure, trying to make the, the race and testing. And I had very little time testing. I had one day, if well, not even a day, it was just a couple hours to try to tune the shocks and, and dial it all in, but uh, came out good. So we are going racing. The truck is done, finally. It took forever to get done. Uh, but as you can see, it looks just like the rendering. Everyone did an awesome job. Uh, it just came out amazing. Lexus and the Cancer Treatment Center of America were really happy with uh, what we did with it. I think I had two hours of uh, time in the truck before I actually raced it, which is crazy, but it just, it's just the way it ended up working out. So we kind of did stuff on the fly and, and, and got it done. But, uh, you know, Art Eugenio came out from Get Some Photo, a good friend of mine. He did the, the photo shoot and all that. Uh, it looks amazing. 
And one thing that I did was I put my port that was in my chest on my dash. I asked the doctor if I could have it before, uh, after they pulled it out. I said, don't throw it away. Let me, I have another, another use for it. And I put it on my dash as a reminder to, uh, you know, that I can, I can win and I beat cancer and uh, it's time to go racing. All right, so it was kind of cool on the way down to Mexico. Uh, I stopped by a Lexus corporate headquarters in Torrance, showed them the race truck. We displayed it out front for a little bit, and we uh, we headed down to Mexico. Uh, we were going to run in that stock full class in 2009, and this was uh, this was mon monumental in the fact that Lexus has never raced a professional uh, off-road uh, uh, sanctioned event. Uh, ever that we're, we were aware of, and so we would have been the first, or we were the first, and it was time to go uh, to go race. And this was the map in 2009. Uh, Paul Williamson, who was uh, a national manager and have an engineering background, was going to be my co-driver, and we were going to race the entire race with no no relief, uh, not getting out of that truck the entire time. And that's exactly what we ended up doing. It took us about 17 hours, but. Uh, this is the truck, you know, brand spanking new, not any dirt on it whatsoever. People in, in Baja were tripping out a little bit, going, what the heck is going on here? You know, you're racing a Lexus, and some of the stock full guys like Justin Matney and RPM, they were like, yeah, we're not too concerned about this guy. Um, and so people kind of just weren't even looking at us in that way. Like, these guys would be lucky to finish. You know, we've seen this come, and, come down here a million times, these new teams, and they just uh, they, they fail miserably most of the time. Uh, but we uh, we did our homework and we had the right people on uh, on the crew. Ted Monk here was my crew chief. He uh, works now for Four Wheel Parts, but he, he has a, a couple race trucks and does uh, his thing with uh, Long Beach Racers. But it was cool. I brought a bunch of engineers down from the proving ground days, and we just uh, we we're ready to go. But we have the the run, so we're we're thinking we're going to be okay. You know, we're gonna we're just going to run a good pace. You know, I'm not out there to set world records. We want to get the truck finished. In, in, basically finishing obviously but we want it we want to do the best we can you know that's that's our goal well you know I pre-ran the first 35 I know you have too and definitely with your experience uh, it's very technical uh, we went out in a profi truck on uh, yesterday and believe me it's a good I think once you get that first 35 up to Ojo Negros then you can kind of settle in but that 35 is pretty tricky for a guy like you that's been driving a lot you know it, it, it yeah I mean I drove uh, one of the FJ cruisers that I have uh, as my pre-runner and I wasn't planning on going real fast. I just wanted to look at the surface, and I'm, I just kept clicking it on quicker and quicker. I'm like, just kind of getting in the rhythm, left foot brake, and getting the vehicle to rotate into the corners. And I'm like, gosh, you know, this is feeling pretty good, but I think it'll be even easier in this truck. But it is very technical. you got to be very, very smart going through that, for sure. Yeah, a lot of tricky stuff. I know on the monitor I had on the deal, the corners where there's big ruts, washouts. Looks like they had a lot of rain up there. Well, I think the biggest thing is, you know, you got to get that suspension set up, you know, with your braking and your throttle. I mean, you got you got to go to full rebound to get that set up so you don't bottom the truck. I mean, that's that's how you got to drive that section, for sure. Well, my buddy Brett over at King got some King shocks on this, and I know those guys know how to set it up. I mean, you know what? I can't thank King enough. I mean, those guys made just some awesome, you know, suspension for this truck, and uh, it feels really good. I mean, be, me being a previous suspension tuner, I'm very picky about how the vehicle should feel, and I'm very happy. So we, we, we feel good about it. All right, once again, just showing you a little bit of stuff going on in the cab, and uh, we're out. We're out here, buddy. Good luck to Joe, the gang here at Lexus. All right, so we are doing tech right here. This is a, called tech inspection, and uh, it was such a cool thing to, to drive through. People asking for autographs. I'm like, what the heck is that? Like, I've never experienced that before, and I was nervous. Uh, you know, here, Paul and I were asked to get up during the press conference and, and talk about our program in front of all the rock stars so that that wasn't easy um here's a great shot of our team this was you know most of these guys are all toyota guys and uh you know they come from the development side engineering and and this and that but uh you know let's get this thing going it's a start right here uh this is a cool shot on the first corner and uh obviously i'm super nervous Hitting the first jump, the Red Bull jump, got about uh, a foot of air maybe, but I was pretty stoked. As you can see, when I came into the landing here, full compression uh, up front, uh, you know, suspension just wasn't ready to go, but we, we got through it. And, uh, you know, this is race course uh, footage from Art, uh, looking pretty good. And we're just trying to be smooth and run a good pace and not really too concerned about battling with anyone at this point. We're just like, let's just do our job and get through it.
you know, we started to find out that uh, the leader had an issue and we, we caught Justin Matney, surprisingly. I just I caught him about 100 miles into the race, bumped him and passed him. And I'm sure Justin was like, what in the heck is that Lexus, you know, getting biased for? That's, that's you know, he was racing for a few years before me. So he was probably a little surprised uh, that we were able to do that. We just kept clicking away. But here's a cool video that my buddy Shy put together. I figured I'd just show you the video instead of trying to talk it through. So I hope you enjoy it. Never thought that I could be so hot, so entwined. Well, off road racing was really what I wanted to do. I felt like I was at work, to be real honest with you. I just felt so comfortable uh, in that situation. I'm like, this is what I want to do. Showing that you know, I've sat in that chair. I know exactly what it's like. I think we're getting the, the emotional support, you know, and I think people are starting to feel it. They're not just seeing it. So I was pretty nervous at this point. Uh, this is definitely uh, something I obviously I love driving, and this was what I do for a living. But this is a whole other world, racing ball. It just, it just is. I wish I could explain it more than that. But until you do it yourself, it's you can't explain it. So here's the start, uh, feeling pretty good. As you can see, it looks like I'm really going slow, but uh, in reality, I felt like I was going really fast. Um, it was pretty funny because Ted, my crew chief, I think he told me at uh, pit two, he's like, you need to slow down. I'm like, what? He's like, yeah, your, your average speed is too high. You're gonna break the trucks, you need to slow down. I'm like, I, I'm not even driving that hard. I'm just trying to run smooth. And I didn't change my driving style because I wasn't beating on the truck. I'm like, you know, I'm gonna do what I think is right. And uh, we uh, we didn't break the truck. We didn't even get a flat tire. So I knew I could go faster. But being the first race, not pre-running, catching guys, surprisingly, I just didn't want to change anything. You know, the BFG guys are awesome. We could never, I could never have done this without the BFG pit support. Uh, those guys are awesome for sure. This was a horrible section. You know, in the trophy truck, I went through here at G's blazing speed. And then I look back at this video and I'm like, holy smokes, I'm barely moving. But uh, at the time it was fast. This, this is video is uh, taken right off Highway 3. Um, and that's a cool place to see the race course right from the road. So pulling into the finish line, uh, we knew we, we, were, we were leading. We had a, a couple hour lead, I think, at that point. Uh, and just 17 hours in the truck, I was like, you gotta be kidding me. So that was the coolest thing, you know, South Fish came out and, uh, you know, said, nice job, you know, it's amazing. Got my winter hat and it was just an incredible, incredible experience. But here's a picture the next day at the score awards. Uh, I'm literally probably drooling on myself. I'm so tired, but uh, you know, we had a great team. Everyone did their job. I was very fortunate for them to to help uh, uh, with the success of this this race uh, and others. But uh, you know, we won for the very first time in a Lexus. This would have been the first time that we're aware of anywhere in the world that Lexus won a professional off-road sanctioned event, and uh, we made history for the brand right here. Uh, Paul Williamson right here is uh, uh, obviously a good friend of mine, uh, but uh, worked 
works at Lexus and was my, my co-driver. And he explained to Lexus uh, how it all went down, and I think they were really surprised. They're like, "What? You guys won for real?" And uh, it kind of started uh, a little bit of a snowball effect. Uh, they didn't know what to do with it on a marketing side, but you can't deny it. You can't ignore it. Um, we're, we're getting press, um, and we're getting a lot of press. Surprising, uh, a lot of people jumped on board and, and really liked uh, the story and what we were doing with the with the program. So. I've got a lot more videos. I've got to all the way up to 2014. So I've got a five-year span of videos that I'm going to be sharing. Uh, this is going to go from episode one to two to three to four until I get through the, just this whole story that uh, uh, some people are maybe aware of, but most people probably haven't seen some of these pictures or really understand behind the scenes of how this whole program uh, started and ended. Uh, but I'm going to share that with you guys. So look forward to it.